Introducing our steam speaker. Hello, everyone. My name is Harald Schirmer, and I'm happy to introduce you to our journey uh, into the human side of transformation and looking inside of the digital resilience. Um, a little bit of a journey of the project of a very big project we have done so far and over the last 10 years, our experience in communication change and of course also learning and transformation. So let's um, have a look. My name, just to put one thing inside, the way how we work, and this is a lot um, with mindset. Um, some people call me trusted irritator, and that's important to understand. I try to create pictures which are very, well, some call it black and white, concrete to understand, make understand what, what is happening here. So trusted irritator, I'm, I'm a little bit happy also about that because that has both parts in it, which I find so important for leadership also, building trust in people and all the other side, of course, also giving a little bit of an irritation, creating the need of change urgency, as we know it from the important change VIPs in the past. Um, I want to start with that important sentence for me, the future we want needs to be invented, otherwise we will get one we don't want, uh, from Joseph Boyce. Why is that so important? Because I see so many people in our organizations currently waiting for someone to tell them what to do next or waiting for what will happen and how do we react on that? And if you take a look at the big companies which are successful in the digital age, those companies are not waiting. They are designing a future and then the frame conditions will, um, will um, well develop around it. And this is something I want to also show you what we did here. Now let's first, of course, take a look again on this. Um, I don't like the term so much VUCA, but we have a, we don't have a better expression uh, on the dynamic which is happening right now. So volatile, uncertain, complex, ambiguity. So take a look at your tools, at, at your processes, the methods, even the organizational structure you have at the moment. Uh, I'm coming from automotive, from continental, and I'm, I'm there since 30 years. And we try to become more and more lean and higher quality efficiency and all that. So we sharpened our axis. And we, our axis became, honestly, they became more uh, chainsaws. So they are very efficient now already. But this chainsaw as a represent, uh, representation of methods, process, and tools, uh, they are made for a slow growing wood. They are made for stability. They are made for predictability. And if you take a look what VUCA means, it doesn't seem like those tools, those methods and processes are made for that world anymore. Now, if you imagine being on that ship and you still have that very efficient chainsaw in your hands, you, you get the picture that maybe my tools, my processes, my methods, my organizational style does not fit that changed environment anymore. Now, what does that mean if we become more concrete? Um, I want to show you the outcome. I start with the outcome of our biggest pro change project uh, over the last um, years. We, we, we had the biggest um, um, yeah, male, male server landscape on, on the planet from one provider and we moved to another one. We installed about 25 uh, new programs uh, in the office environment. Of course, uh, you can imagine we need uh, good training partners, we need good uh, change management and all those things. Um, but we did it very, very different this time. Um, just to give you some other numbers, we migrated for a term of six months every day between 1,000 and 1,500 people from one mail, chat, um, task, um, calendar, video conferencing solution to another. During, everyone was of course working. Six months, every day, 1,000 to 1,500 people. And we even had in, uh, uh, incidents uh, where uh, the Chinese government took out the app for the VPN client. So our executives in China were from one day to the next offline, and we had to react on that. So you can imagine um, there was a lot of dynamic in that project. Now the outcome, number one, 71% of our colleagues have gave us the feed, have given us the feedback, they are satisfied or very satisfied. Another 20% were not negative. 
So 90% not negative feedback in such a global transformation project, which hit everyone in the core of what they're doing every day, collaboration, communication, uh, scheduling and all those things. The provider uh, told us that we are the number one organization which is running those apps. So the adoption, the usage of all of those apps, not just the core apps, but all of the apps, we have the highest adoption rate they've ever seen. And our, one of our training providers where we did the guide network, I will come later to that, that's our change enabler, so to say, with that journey, they said it's a once in a lifetime experience for them uh, to see how our people have been engaged and drove that change um, into this transformation. So with that outcome, I hope I could make you curious of, hey, what, what did you guys do differently? So let's take a look. Number one, and that is a very, very important sentence. Coming back to the VUCA picture, I don't wanna say management is the wrong, um, the wrong method to, to do things today, but I, we need a bigger toolbox. And management typically is to reduce complicated things to make them simple so we can delegate them, so we can put, slice the elephant in pieces and rebuild them uh, with the responsible people. We can plan on it and all those things. An elevator pitch is nothing but reduction of a complicated topic into a simple slide. Yeah, the same uh, one page or so putting everything on one slide so you can convince your board or anyone. That is a simplification. And also that sentence I just present you is a simplification, but we try to open up your mind. So when we talk about diversity, it's not just about male and female or maybe handicapped people, which is important, of course, but we really talk about the richness of different perspectives, different uh, behaviors, different knowledge, different skills, different cultures. So all you can think of now, and yet that is complex. There we don't talk about complicated anymore. Yeah, so complexity is when you start respecting individual needs, which automatically then generates, if you think about it, a one size fits all top down rollout. This is what the management perspective uh, typically is in such change projects. So we have it structured, it's planned, everybody knows what to do, and then you roll it out with a, with a structured communication plan. Now, if you respect diversity and think about six months um, just come back. So what, what some of the change organizations we called and we asked for help told us, yeah, you need to have a very good day one experience. And they created us a, a proposal. I mean, there was a very nice first day or day one experience for the new uh, environment. But then we calculated and say, wait a second, we have six months every day at day one for a different other user group and different cultures. So how could this day one work for six months in a row? How do you make people curious six months in a row? Yeah, so it didn't really work with the typical management approach. So we said, okay, we need to respect individuality. And on the other side, that will help us to solve not only complicated tasks, which are best solved with the management style. But when you talk about leadership, when you talk about um, solving complex tasks, Complex tasks don't have one answer. They have options, they have different answers. So you need to foster options and that has to be learned as well. Yeah, so this is a very important sentence and, and sometimes maybe very hard to accomplish also because in our mind, we always try to simplify things to make it easier to be digested by our target groups. Now, what did we do? Specifically in terms of learning, um, we asked all our people via our enterprise social network, how do you want to learn? And maybe ask yourself now, how do you want to learn? Is it classroom? Is it a webinar? Is it a click by click uh, sequence? Is it getting an overview? Or is it getting details? Is it getting answers in a support question? Or is it getting a preview of what will come next so you can be prepared? Is it a one pager? Or is it a thick book where you can really dig deeper into it and, and see what all the buttons do? Or is it more the holistic understanding, how do we collaborate with those tools? So I try to give you a little bit of a picture on how your questions might be leading you to learn or to, to the question on how do we want to learn? But also you could look at in the formats. Some people like it to have a separate room to be off their desk. 
Some others want to learn on their desk. Some want to have a visual learning. Some others want to read text. Some others need someone to show them how that works. So people are different. Th that is a fact. So if we respect that individuality, one size fits all learning or training solutions will not work. So what we did, we asked then in the next step, is learning important for people? And this is where we all suffer at the moment that many people, and ask yourself again, I will ask you three questions. Be honest with yourself. Number one, is learning important? Yeah, typically I do this since two and a half years now, I get a 90% agreement on yes, learning is important for me. Now, second question, do you have learning in your calendar? Do you block time for learning? And typically now I get only 10% agreement. Now, third question, if you would put that learning time in your calendar and now your boss calls you, a customer calls you, or a colleague just goes by if it's possible with COVID, does he or she get the time from you, your blocker? And if you said yes now three times, of course, then we have to rethink, hey, learning is important, but it's not in my calendar. And we all know what's not in the calendar doesn't happen. And if it's in the calendar, everything else is more important. We defend meeting time, but we don't defend learning time. So really think about that learning culture. We have great training providers out there. Um, the TTS company, we work together. They have awesome offers. But if you don't realize a real good learning culture where people that have time or make time even better, for learning because it is a priority for their own future, then all those different um, um, uh, offers you make them might not uh, fulfill their full potential. Now, we then went up and said, okay, we want communication change and learning, all those three things in a new level. So we have those three levels where we said, well, informing doesn't really change anyone. We talk about behavior change and transformation, not just about informing someone, hey, uh, this is different now. Then if you get more commitment, of course, if you involve people, if they have the chance to, to have your way of thinking, uh, not in terms of copying it, but to understand why are they doing this? Where are they going to? Who is in there? We often call the typical change management approach the setup of a horror movie. Yeah, everything's dark and sometimes you hear something, sometimes you see someone popping up and it is as a horror movie. And what we try to do here is we, we turn on the light. So all our project went in an enterprise social network. So we did that very transparent and had people uh, being part of all that journey. And if you achieve that in the, next, in the third level, and that's to activate people. If you want behavior change, it's not enough to inform or to say, well, have a little finger on the steering wheel, but really activate people, let them create the learning content. Rethink the roles of a trainer and someone who's learning something. Let's make them the trainers or let's make them, let's create a sharing culture. And if you have tools that support that, that you have valid content, which is approved and, and you have also the dynamic content, then you will gain from the, from the structured approach and you will gain from the network approach. Now, here's a picture of the networks we established for that project. So starting on the upper right uh, corner, you see 1,400 people we motivated to become guides. So learning partners, change partners, their role models, their focus is on skills and mindset to really personalize change behaviors. Then on the lower right, we have the knowledge brokers, not knowledge managers anymore, but knowledge brokers. They support us with their knowledge and help answering questions. We established a social support forum to make the the support process transparent again, because support is nothing but learning. I have a question and I need an answer. And since we delegated that so many years, people lack, have a lack now of asking good questions. So we had to establish that again, to make living knowledge uh, visible again. Living knowledge, I mean, knowledge which is going back and forth between people. And last but not least, um, we have the organizational coordinators, which are more connected to the, to the business, of course, and the local evergreen teams, 2,500 people who made things or who realized things in the local culture in China, in Singapore, in, in Mexico, and so on. Yeah, so, and those networks were connected. They were learning from each other. They, they had different organizational styles. 
So that was a complete new organizational structure based on transparency, leadership, and working with complexity. Now, as I mentioned, we asked people, how do you want to learn? And that are some of the learning answers. So there are the guides, there are personal supporters and change agents. We, we created a traveler's guide to the future. Uh, you probably remember that from Douglas Adams. So that was a storyline in behind. We told people, don't panic, there's a lot coming, but we got you covered. And I'm not going through all of them, but you can read it yourself. Also the sidebar here, and, and just to mention that as an important part, we had um, the impression that people don't really like to search so much for help. They want to get it delivered when they need it. And, and what TTS delivers with that active sidebar, and we really like that approach, is when people are somewhere and needed help, they got it delivered. They got a suggestion. Hey, while you're here, this is what you can do with it. And that really made a big, big difference here. Yeah, so the combination of all those learning scenarios, they were all connected and you could, could jump from one to the other. Um, that was really helpful. Also connecting that sidebar, uh, we put a little uh, part in the end where we, we, we enabled people to find the guide or to find a, a personal support or go to the social support forum to ask questions more transparently. So interconnecting things, the options uh, is a very important topic. Uh, last but not least, there's one important thing I also want to share with you. Once you start being more transparent, respectful for individual needs, and uh, yeah, inclusive with what you do, uh, the outcome is very, very different. So typically in Germany specifically, you have those, those uh, contracts, what is allowed to be used, what has to be turned off because people might misuse it. And we work with our works council very closely together from the very first. So we made not a a management approach in terms of we give you the information you need so you give us the the release and the approval but we made a learning journey with them so we showed them the real thing not just powerpoint and at some point uh, our, our works came, council themselves came up with the idea hey with that complexity with so many things uh, we probably don't need a mistrust contact but a trust agreement and we call that a manifest and you even can find, of course, some additional information, including the manifest itself online, because we are somewhat proud of that. This is something very new. And now since the project is, a, is over a year and a half, I'm always coming back to them and checking, do you have any alerts, any escalations now with those sensitive topics? And they always tell me, no, we gave trust and we receive now trust. We, had, we have reduced a lot of rules and regulations and people are not misusing it because they become the trust worth, because they understood why we are doing it and what is our future. Okay, last topic I want to show you very practically because uh, remember I said, do you have time for learning? And many people say they don't. So let me just show you one practical example where all your time goes. So I, the headline is stop sending, start sharing. Um, what you typically do is when you share documents, you use email probably. So you have basically, let's go through that flow. You have a document on your hard drive, then you send it to someone, you have a copy in your, in, in your outbox. Then you have in the receiver's inbox a copy. This one has to put the copy down basically on the hard drive to work on it, to review it or do something. And then it goes all the way back. So a copy in the outbox, a copy in your inbox, and then you store it on your hard drive. Might be a SharePoint or some other document storage. But this means for every such cycle, you create seven copies of your document in this type, in two versions even. If you do that now with five or 10 people, and maybe the file has even 10 megabyte, you can imagine the waste in time, in bandwidth, in, in carbon footprint. So what, what is your energy level here when you do that? And does anyone find the latest version of it? No. So alone in this example, you can save so much time by using the cloud, putting the documents or the learning content as well somewhere in the cloud and let everyone work on this one document in a sharing mode. And I promise you this, will, uh, this alone will save so much time for storage, for archiving and for finding stuff uh, you need. So if you need time for learning, make time for learning. You won't get it. And so much for my input. I hope that was inspiring and giving you an idea of how different you can start working when you go, uh, when, when you open your mind, when you get out of that typical box and question your processes, question your methods and formats. They're all out there, 
digital allows us to work time independent, location independent, and scalable. So let's use that. Thank you very much.